Hi, third grade. I hope you had a good Shabbos and a restful and fun weekend. We are going to be reading Because of Wind dixie together. So everybody, I hope you have your novel out. Um, we're going to be reading chapter 11. Um, but before we start that, I want to talk to you about something in the book. And I want to ask you, um, how many of you have a fear of something? It could be a little fear. Um, you may be afraid to climb a ladder or you may be afraid to go into an elevator or an escalator. And how do you work out your fear? Well, you tell somebody, you tell your parents, you talk about it, and then hopefully um, they help you get through this fear. Um, but when it comes to animals, specifically dogs, um, dogs need a lot of responsibility. And besides walking them, there could be dogs that have fears too. They might be afraid of things, but they can't tell you about it because they can't speak. So how do we know if a dog has a fear? Well, think about that. How can we tell if a dog has a fear? Maybe by the way they act, maybe some of their way they shake a little bit or barking louder or running around. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen to Win Dixie. Win Dixie has a fear, and it's called a pathological fear. It's not a little fear, and he can't express himself. He can't tell the preacher or Opal about the fear because he can't talk. So, how do they know that he has this fear? So, first, I want you to look at this word pathological fear. That's a fear like no other fear. It's a fear that can't be explained, and it's a fear that's very difficult to help because there's really no reason necessarily for the fear. You just have it in you. Like I said, if a child or an adult has a fear, they can talk about it, but the dog can't talk about it. So how do you help a dog if they have a pathological fear? What do you think are some things you can do to help that dog? Maybe you can hold the dog and comfort the dog, but what happens when the dog is going wild and crazy? You really have to learn how to calm that dog down. So let's begin the chapter and learn about when Dixie's pathological fear. Open up to page 72 and I'm going to begin reading with you. I hope you're following along. That night there was a real bad thunderstorm, but what woke me up wasn't the thunder and lightning. It was Win Dixie whining and butting his head against my bedroom door. Okay, that means he was hitting his head back and forth against the door to get Opal's attention. Win Dixie, I said, what are you doing? He didn't pay any attention to me. He just kept beating his head against the door and whining and whimpering. And when I got out of bed and went over and put my hand on his head, he was shaking and trembling so hard that it scared me. I knelt down and wrapped my arms around him, but he didn't turn and look at me or smile or sneeze or wag his tail or do any normal kind of Winn-Dixie thing. He just kept beating his head against the door and crying and shaking. You want the door open, I said? Huh? Is that what you want? Remember when Dixie can't speak to tell her what she, he wants. I stood up and opened the door and when Dixie flew through it like something big and ugly and mean was chasing him. When Dixie, I hissed, come back here. I didn't want him going and waking the preacher up. But it was too late when Dixie was already at the other end of the trailer in the preacher's room. Now, remember the trailer is not very big. The trailer just might have different sections, maybe a room for Opal and one for the preacher, and then the living room, kitchen, dining room is all one big space, so it does not have a lot of space in the trailer and doesn't have a lot of place for Winn-Dixie to run. Um, towards the bottom of 73. I could tell because it was a spooing sound that must have come from, a spurring sound that must have come from Winn-Dixie jumping up on the bed. And then there was a sound from the preacher, like he was real surprised. But none of it lasted long because when Dixie came back, tearing back out of the preacher's, turn the page, 74, room, panting and running like crazy, I tried to grab him, but he was going too fast. So here Opal is trying to hold on to him, grab him and comfort him, but when Dixie is just going a little bit crazy here and she can't get a hold of him. Opal, said the preacher, he was standing at the door to his room, bedroom, and his hair was all kind of wild on top of his head, and he was looking around like he wasn't sure where he was. Opal, what's going on? I don't know, I told him, but just then and there, just then there was a huge crack of thunder, one so loud that it shook the whole trailer, and with Dixie came shooting back out of my room and went running right past me, and I screamed, Daddy, watch out! Okay, so we're... 
in the middle of 74, um, Winn-Dixie is certainly, um, we think he's afraid of the thunder and that's why he's acting this way. So I want you, while I'm reading this, I want you to picture this scene, the setting here in your brain, and you really, once you picture what's going on with Winn-Dixie and the preacher and Opal, um, you'll really get a better understanding as, um, as a, for what is taking place here. All right, so she screams out, Daddy, watch out! We're on 74 where it says, but... But the preacher was still confused. He just stood there, and when Dixie came, barreling right toward him like he was a bowling ball, and the preacher was the only pin left standing, and whom they both felt... I'm sorry, and wham, they both fell to the ground. Uh-oh, I said. Okay, I hope you're picturing this in your brain. Um, I know that we spoke about um, analogies and uh, similes and comparing things. Um, and what is when, uh, when Dixie being compared to a bowling ball and a preacher is being compared to a pin. So the similes, he was a bowling ball and the preacher was the only pin left. And it does use the word like he was a bowling ball. So we know in similes, the word like is used. As if when, Bix, when Dixie, if you can picture this, is the bowling ball running down the bowling alley and the preacher's all the way at the end of the bowling alley and the preacher is the pin. And what happens to that one pin? The, bowl, the ball actually knocked the pin over. Top of page 75. Opal, said the preacher. He was lying on his stomach and when Dixie was sitting on top of him, panting and whining. Yes, sir, I said. Opal, the preacher said again. Yes, sir, I said louder. Do you know what a pathological fear is? No, sir, I told him. The preacher raised a hand. He rubbed his nose. And we know, what does it mean when he rubs his nose? He's thinking very hard. Well, he said after a minute, it's a fear that goes way beyond normal fears. It's a fear you can't be talked out of or reasoned out of. So a pathological fear is something that you can't really convince somebody to calm down and um, take a deep breath in the moment while it's happening. You might be able to do it later on when you're, the person or the dog is calmer, but right when it's happening, it's very hard to calm the dog down. Just then, there was another crack of thunder, and when Dixie rose straight up in the air like somebody had poked him with something hot. When he hit the floor, he started running. He ran back to my bedroom, and I didn't even try to catch him. I just got out of his way. Okay, I hope you're still picturing the scene in your brain, picturing the setting, what's going on here. The preacher lay there on the ground, rubbing his nose. Finally, he sat up. He said, Opal, I believe when Dixie has a pathological fear of thunderstorms. And just when he finished his sentence, here came when Dixie running to save his life. I got the preacher up off the floor and out of the way just in time. There didn't seem to be a thing we could do for when Dixie to make him feel better. So we just sat there and watched him run back and forth all terrorized and panting and every time there was another crack of thunder when Dixie acted all over again like it was surely the end of the world. So the preacher did say this is a pathological fear, one that he can't be talked out of. So what did Opal and what the preacher decide to do? Just let when Dixie run back and forth and just let him do this while he was all scared about the thunderstorm. Okay, bottom of page 76, I'm up to the storm. The storm won't last long, the preacher told me, and when it's over, the real wind dixie will come back. After a while, the storm did end, the rain stopped, and there wasn't any more lightning, and finally the last rumble of thunder went away, and when dixie quit running back and forth and came over to where he, to where me and the preacher were sitting and cocked his head, like he was saying, what in the world are the two of you out of bed in the middle of the night? And then he crept up on the couch with us in this funny way he has, where he gets on the couch an inch at a time, kind of sliding himself into it, looking off in a different direction, like it's all happening by accident, like he doesn't intend to get on the couch. But all of a sudden, there he is. And so the three of us sat there. I rubbed Win dixies head and scratched him behind the ears the way he liked. And the preacher said, there are an awful lot of thunderstorms in Florida in the summertime. Okay, so think about what Opal is doing to have um, to comfort Win dixie Yes, sir, I said. I was afraid that maybe he would say we couldn't keep a dog who went crazy with pathological fear every time there was a crack of thunder. 
We'll have to keep an eye on him, the preacher said. He put his arm around Winn-Dixie. We'll have to make sure he doesn't get out during a storm. He might run away. We have to make sure we keep him safe. Yes, sir, I said again. All of a sudden, it was hard for me to talk. I loved the preacher so much. I loved him because he loved Winn-Dixie. I loved him because he was going to forgive Winn-Dixie for being afraid. But most of all, I loved him for putting his arm around Winn-Dixie just like that, like he was already trying to keep him safe. Okay, so um, remember I specifically with 3A, I spoke about foreshadowing. I told you that sometimes the author will tell you something in the novel that's going to happen later on. The author gives you a hint to what's going to take place later on in the novel. We talked a little bit about this. This is really a middle school term, something you're going to learn in middle school, but I want to discuss it with you anyway. Um, and I'm going to tell you right here, it says, We'll have to keep an eye on him, the preacher said. And that line over there is foreshadowing because you have to think later on in the novel, you're going to hear something when he says, we'll have to make sure he doesn't get out during a storm. He might run away. We have to make sure we keep him safe. So on page 78, when the um, preacher tells this to Opal, that is foreshadowing. That is a hint as to something that's going to happen later on. Maybe you're thinking in your brain, you could make the prediction that what's going to ha happen later on in the novel. But if you can't, that's okay, because we will get to that part of the novel, and then we can refer back and say, oh, I remember when the um, preacher said we're going to have to keep an eye on Winn-Dixie during thunderstorms. All right, so um, what you're going to do is, I hope you have your um, packet out, your Winn-Dixie packet out. I'll give you a couple seconds to take it out. You're going to turn to the beginning with the character traits. Um, this is for chapter 10, so I'm assuming, um, uh, I don't know, Mrs. Um, Kowalski probably discussed it with 3B, but 3A, for Gloria um, Dump, I'd like you to write a character trait and one piece of text evidence. Okay, that's for Gloria Dump. That's from chapter 10, even though I just read chapter 11. Then turn to chapter six through 10. I want to just go over the chapter 10 assignment also because um, Mrs. Kowalski spoke, uh, read to you in chapter 10, even though this is chapter 11. And it says number seven over here. What did Gloria Dump suggest that she and Opal do together? Remember, this is a chapter 10 question. Here's the multiple choice. At the end of chapter 10, what was Opal amazed by? Right here, chapter 10 question. And we skip this page, which you should have done. And now we turn to chapter 11 to 15. And it says, how did Winn-Dixie act during the sun thunderstorm? Please remember TTQA for all short answer or long answer questions, uppercases in the beginning, and marks at the end of your sentence. And what did the preacher, number two also, so you're doing number one and two, what did the preacher believe when Dixie's reaction was called? What did that mean, and how would they keep him safe? So please remember to answer all the parts to this question, not just what it was called. Make sure you answer with TTQA. All the answers to the question, make sure that they make sense. All right? Um, for the green group, I just want to mention um, that I think you possibly did this, but just in case. Um, one second, which packet do I have? Oh, also I want to make sure you also finish your vocabulary words. So the sheet with the vocabulary words on chapter 6 through 10, make sure you answer all of these. So 3A, at, up until now, I want to also just, um, I'll get back to the green group in a minute. Up until now, I just want to go through all the different things before Pesach. In case you have not answered these questions, I want to make sure everybody has done this complete page, this complete complete page, you should have completed everything here, okay, this you'll be doing now. Um, 3A, we did not do this page, that's okay, if you want to, you can, we didn't do it. This page should have been done. This page should have been done. And this page should have been done. And after this page, then 
make sure, I don't know if I just showed you this, the vocabulary page is all done. Six through 10, everything should be done. Now, all this should be done unless you left out a question here or there. I just want you, everybody, to check over, make sure it is done. Everything here, six through 10, chapter six through 10. Picture over here. And then you start in chapter 11 to 15. All right, so just make sure so far everything is done in your packet so you keep up to date. And the green group, I just want to make sure um, in case you did not do uh, this question, I want to make sure that you did this question. What do Gloria and Opal have in common? So that could also be chapter 9 or if you want to include um, something in chapter 10 because it does mention something in chapter 10 also. All right, so that is it. Um, third grade and it was so nice reading to all of you this was a special treat to read to also to 3b um, if I don't um, obviously see you but if I don't I won't be teaching anymore until after Pesach um, and I look forward to everybody having a wonderful Pesach with your family having lots of fun hopefully we have good weather and looking forward to uh, speaking and zooming with you after Pesach goodbye